harvest people as nourishment using oh. skin on their floor. <laughs> Soil and crane as people. That took yeah. a turn. <laughs> you can make hats out of them. You can make human skin hats. It's so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> this is not Happy Home Designer. It is not. <laughs> Welcome to the Experience Point. Uh, this is the new show, Experience Chat. Uh, it's a short, eh, longish, <laughs> short <laughs> long <laughs> longish chat. Short to medium. That we to long. Uh, are trying to do every week. Uh, I'm Jesse. I'm Andrew. And I'm Aaron. Aaron's back. Hello. We kicked out Rihanna. I divorced her. She's gone now. She's actually uh, she's in the other room. Sleeping because she got some dental work done, so she looks like a chipmunk and she can't talk. So <laughs> she'll she'll be back next week, um, or however increment of we record this. Um, so what have you guys been up to last week? I know you've been playing a lot of Pokemon. Yes, that came out. Playing mm. <laughs> a crap ton of Pokemon. He's the only yeah. one that's purchased. <laughs> yeah, well, tell us more about it. Yeah. I, I want to hear more about it because I'm, okay, he, he wants to desperately be sold on it. I'm sold on it. I just can't I, afford it. I, I, I have no hope of being sold on it. Which is fine, I'm not trying to sell on anyone on it. Um, so, I mean, just if you browse the internet, there's a lot of toxicity just around this game. Mm. And I think the thing that I'll notice just from any Pokemon game is that the Pokemon gameplay loop is just not bad. It's fun. It's inherently a fun, interactive experience, no matter what they do, as long as they don't deviate too much from that core mm. formula. I don't think there can be a bad Pokemon game, if that makes sense. But I also don't think this is a good Pokemon game. Mm. I would paradox. S- yeah, <laughs> it's well, it's, it's living in that like that average world of like it's not bad, and I'm not not having fun. Like I'm actually enjoying going through the story and like fighting the gyms. But it's nothing like I don't know. It just there's a lo- so much potential there, and every other thing that Nintendo has done recently has been so innovative and like like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey mm-hmm. like it's been such like a huge jump in genre mm-hmm. and just kind of seems like Game Freak dropped the ball when it came to this generation's innovation factor for all the yeah. other games. Let's play it safe. Well, that I was going to like say a lot but that pretty much summed up everything so <laughs> yeah yeah I feel like it's just the same old Pokemon, and I just wanted something now, new. And like, like the bone, like the good thing to talk about it is like the I like the, like the Pokemon designs. I think they knocked it out of the park. Um, the wild area is a really cool idea that they really hope that they expand on in future games. <laughs> just because a game. yeah, literally, if they can just take that and make it a massive portion of the game, I think that they'll really please most of their player base. Because everyone I'm reading online has been that actually like is enjoying max raids and like doing all the stuff is really enjoying the wild area and the mm-hmm. concepts behind You've been it. Saying the raids were a lot of fun. Yeah, they're more fun than I expected because I kind of thought they would be very like, eh, as long as you bring the right type, you guaranteed to win. It's not like that. Once you get to like the four and five star raids, it's actually difficult if you oh, don't geez. have people with you. Yeah, I. Dexit and like stuff that they've cut out of it feature wise and them maybe not revolutionizing anything is like an issue for sure. But like you're saying, like Pokemon is playing Pokemon. You still get that feeling of like starting an adventure and getting out there, even if it's like this, maybe the same adventure every time. Like, I still just, like, always love... Like, Pokemon's my favorite, like, universe. Like, mm. as a... Close followed up by Star Wars. It's a very... There's a, there's a reason it's the biggest media franchise on the yeah. planet. Yeah. It just makes me feel good inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, right. until they, like, completely, like, dissect and decimate a Pokemon game to the point where they've changed so much that it... They'd have to change the gameplay loop, which is what they're terrified of doing in right. the first place and why they probably didn't innovate. Uh, but they've done, like... Spin-off games like Mystery Dungeon and stuff before, like like they can do different things. Like yeah. experiment with the game. It doesn't have to be a Gen Nine or whatever. What they should have done is they should have experimented with Let's Go. Let's Go should yeah. have just been a straight one for one remake on the Switch. It should have been. Which I think they just they need to abandon. And every game, like I don't know, every game company that kind of does the whole like yearly game cycle, it's going to be mm-hmm. awesome. It they fall Assassin's off the horse. Creed. Yeah, Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty. Like, these are all series that have weak games because somewhere in that cycle, a game ends up failing because they have to push it out through the deadline. Yeah. And I feel like if Pokemon is not a franchise that, like, it would hurt them so badly in sales if they took a year off. No. But take, take another year. Like, games or, should be released when they're done. Or do what Activision Blizzard does with Call of Duty and make, okay, here's Game Freak. They make the mainline Pokemon games. Here's, like, they have, like, that creature ink that helps them, like, portal that stuff. Like, yeah. they make all the, like, remakes and spin-off titles. Mm. So that way that Game Freak can spend two years on every mainline game. Mm. I don't know. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, because with, with Call of Duty, it would be, like, 
Activision Tri or um, Infinity War Treyarch, Infinity War Treyarch, and mm -hmm. they would go. Wah. And they added like Sledgehammer Games, yeah. like all these other like divisions to make it like easier to develop. Yeah, I, I, I still think the biggest problem, which we touched on last week, was that like Nintendo was just not allocating the resources that they should to allow them to do this. Like they're mm -hmm. still such a small company. Game Freak is such a small company, and they're spread so thin with with town and everything. And a lot of it's just coming down from we're, we're we live in America. We are Americans. The Japanese mindset on this stuff is yeah. so vastly different than anything we deal with on a regular basis. Which that actually is kind of surprising because like that that mindset seems like they are following like Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed, where it is mm -hmm. just like we gotta just churn the same thing out every year and people are gonna buy it. Like, <laughs> and it's it's very much. It, they said I remember that when they pitched this the first time, they were like, "It's gonna be aimed at the veterans of the Pokemon series." And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't feel that at all. Yeah. I feel like it's very much aimed at the casual player. Yeah, because I think competitive play has been dumbed down. Like EV training is oh, easy. You can max out IVs. I don't. I I I hate EV training. Uh -oh. I hate IVs. I hate all that stuff, man. I yeah. hate that. I just want to. I only want. I'm sorry. I'm you just want to make a good friend in the other room. It's okay. Um, you just want to make friends and go on adventures. I want a good single player experience, but also I'm really I really love the competitive. Pokemon scene, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's just bogged down by tedious tasks. Yeah, I hate that I so much. Just, to actually play on your like absolutely. actual console, yeah. yeah. And I just we do not support bootleg things on this <laughs> podcast. Well, yeah, I just think as soon as you get into the the realm of like grinding out eggs for hours and yeah. hours and hours to get that perfect nature and the right IVs, and that's like, I just want I want to pick the Pokemon, I want to pick the well, moves. And so I don't know. They've I simplified it a ton. So now um, it's the candies. Right? Yeah. So you're not you're no longer limited to ten of the like vitamins. You can max out someone's EV stats with vitamins. Now. Oh well, that's cool. Um, you can boost IVs with like the super training or whatever I think it's called. I actually haven't done the IVs, so that could be wrong. And then you can also EV train by sending people with Poke jobs. Look at jobs. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, see, they could just completely eliminate this if they just got rid of those things altogether. Yeah, I don't know how that would work behind the scenes because it's just been something that's literally been there since the beginning. But I feel like if they wanted to, they could make it work. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost wish that there was like, like in fighting games, you might have a ranked play and a casual play. Yeah. I kind of wish there was different leagues where you could play online with a team that like, like if you just want to use the team that you're using in the single player that you just enjoy the Pokemon of. You can get into a casual one where it's like you're not allowed to do any EV training. Or maybe it just like levels out the EV, so it's only about the Pokemon and the typing and, and the moves. Yeah, right? it just simplifies it a lot. Yeah. It takes out like the, the, the grind of it, because it's like it'd be the same as like, oh I wanna have my like fun little team and, and you get online and you just get wrecked by like a perfectly like IV trained like neckbeard that was just like sitting there like grinding <laughs> out eggs, just running around in a circle for thirty five hours a day. It's like Ugh. The thing is, is that most people who do play a competitive Pokemon, they don't actually do all that stuff. They usually just use computer programs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Where's the fun of that? Yeah. <laughs> um, Tell Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been our review on Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah, well, you, much. Would you, would you <laughs> assign a, a number to it out of 10? Yeah, I would say like, uh, it's, I said average, like 5.5, maybe a 6. Oof, that's low. Yeah. Yeah, because you were texting me, you were, you were like, screw the haters, this game is so much fun. But And that's the thing, I'm still enjoying it, which is why I don't think it's like a three or a four. Yeah. But it's definitely like, uh, I'd be hesitant to spend $60 on this, like, mm. off the bat. Yeah, well, it's never going to go lower than that. So yeah. You have to get it off of eBay or something, maybe get lucky, I don't know. Um, yeah. What have I, you guys been playing? Uh, as, as a follow-up to last week, Jesse, you recommended me that Mad Max game. Yeah. I started that. Oh, cool. Love that. Really? Holy crap, is that game amazing. It's like, it's definitely a little bit rough around the edges. It's not a AAA, like, action game that you'd see, like... But you can see that there's effort in it. There's so much effort, yeah. so much attention to detail. Um, the, 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 I love the, the car, like, spoiler alert to the first cutscene of the game. Like, <laughs> Mad Max's car is, like, his thing. It gets taken, destroyed, and scrapped. Uh, and eventually you feel like, oh, they Metroid Prime it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually uh, thinking about that in, in the Mandalorian episode we just watched with the ship. Which we'll, we'll get into that. But um, uh, yeah, so you have to like build your car up from the ground up and you can like add like grappling hooks and stuff on it. So like it, it's just, it's a lot like Fury Road. Um, so there's like the, the blue skin or the, um, I don't have no colors. I'm a graphic designer. The like gray skinned guys with like the, the chrome. The chrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny and Crow, what a lovely day. So there's like those guys, and so you have like a little 
hook shot type like grappling hook thing. So you literally like will stab him and like pull him out of the car like just with the weight and you can like ram him into stuff and it's yeah. just like and the physics. So how much? I was like, like how much of it is car really? combat? Uh, it's it's seemed about fifty fifty so far. So it's an open world, um, but you can drive around whatever you want. You'll you'll be going through your canyons and stuff, and then all of a sudden it'll be like, oh, I gotta go through here. Does it foot. feel low key twisted metal inspired? Uh, no, no. It's the most the closest game that I thought it was emulating was um, Arkham Knight. Okay. Just you were saying last week that the, the combat is basically Batman, which it literally is. Like when mm -hmm. enemies are about to hit you, you hit triangle, you'll parry it, and then you hit X or uh, square again, and you'll you'll knock him out or whatever. You can do basically the same things that Batman can do combat-wise, but then you can jump in the car and just start immediately driving around. So it's kind of like, um, that was Arkham Knight where you've got the, the Batmobile, right? At any time you can just drive around? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, <clears throat> so, it's like I said, it's open world, so it's it's fairly... D didn't seem as linear as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like, chapter one, the prologue, and but I'm loving it so far. The, the atmosphere, I love anything post-apocalyptic, so like the atmosphere, the, the sound design is something that I freaking love because like I was playing it when like Drianna was sleeping so I had my headphones in and I was just like hearing all the like little like wind like uh, across the sand. I'm really and, glad like, that you played with headphones because that's what I did. And, okay. Like, I, I got to experience the same yeah, thing. Yeah like you're crunching through the sand and like you can hear metal creaking and like you can hear just like people yelling in the distance and like firefights going on and stuff and it, oh. It's always nice when it like studio puts in a lot of work yeah. and the Foley work. Which is a shame because like this game like fell flat like it didn't get very good reviews nobody like ever I, I i mean even me who like i love mad max i love post-apocalyptic things it's totally a game for me and i didn't play it until two people told me that actually i was saying last week yeah. that somebody told me about it the day before you told me about it i was so like I, I gotta play this game now but yeah i'm, I'm like mad a lot so far I, I didn't get super far in it but i think it's because it was on sale on steam that's the only reason i bought it oh, okay <laughs> so i had gotten it it was free for PlayStation Plus, and I hadn't. Even, oh. I downloaded it, but I didn't even uh, play it. It okay. came out in like April, I think, it was free. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Why. We were just talking about how like um, oversaturated we are with content. That was just like, oh, yeah. even like the perfect game for me could come out, and I would still like be like, oh, we'll get around to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I, I can't. Man, there's so many things I just I want to drop everything for. I know. I just I like I can I can name a game that only any of us have. Like I want to play. The Fallen Order, yes. so bad. It's, it looks so cool. I don't know if it's going to be like an amazing or like crazy, like, oh my god, this is such a unique experience, but just like the idea of Tomb Raider plus Star Wars. Yeah, yeah sure. Why I not? was going to say, everyone's saying it's like Uncharted Star Wars. Yes. Um, which was basically what 1313 was going to be before that got canned. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I really want to play that. Um, mm. Again, uh, if you <laughs> sign up for our Patreon, you can help me play the games that I want to play. But yeah, I've. It could be the most most bland, like story. It doesn't have to revolutionize anything. It's a a next gen Star Wars game, that, like action adventure Star Wars game that we have by like a good studio. Yeah, like yeah. Respawn has a good record mm -hmm. of doing well, yeah. or at least making games that are mechanically nice. Like yeah. not the Titanfall two did well. <laughs> yeah, it didn't do well, but it, it played real nice. Exactly, uh, it was smooth. Um, and they have Apex too. So, <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, we're in this like. Uh, I don't want to say renaissance of Star Wars because I never left it, but like Star Wars is very big right now. Episode Nine's coming out. Mandalorian is just launched. Um, so I've been like real into uh, Star Wars lately. I actually, I started watching. Um, and get into like what we've been watching lately. Um, I started watching Rebels. Star Wars Rebels. Have you watched either of those? Nope. And I'm sure Jesse hasn't. But <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch Clone Wars at all? So I got through like the first season and I stopped. But then I was told, like, no, 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 you need to, like, push past that first season because it gets amazing yeah. after that. And uh, I, I really plan on starting it and, like, actually getting through it. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, now that Disney Plus is out, you can watch whenever you want. Exactly. Um, yeah, Ahsoka's character, super freaking annoying in the first season. The whole, like, hey, Snips, and, uh, like, oh, r 2 e Like, she's just, like, yeah. little, 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 and they She's almost that. comic relief -y. yeah. Yeah, and they know that, and they did that on purpose so that she can grow. Like, they have, like, avatar levels of character development. Wow. Show. Like I mean, I've heard amazing things. things. Yeah. 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 It's, it's very good. That being said, I started Rebels in episode two. I was like, okay, this already might be better. Like, wow. It's, okay. Yeah. It's, it's everything that I wanted from the best parts of Star Wars, which is when like groups of characters come together and like, they're kind of like this ragtag team. And instead of it just being like your couple main characters, like Ahsoka and Obi-Wan and who Obi-Wan in Clone Wars is like, 
the best character. Like that series made Obi Wan my favorite Star Wars character. Um, but in this, like Clone Wars, had to follow a very strict set of rules. You can only do so much with the time period. You can only mm -hmm. do so much with the Republic and the clones. And they did a lot with it. Not, not to, you know, take anything away from that. But with Rebels, it's like almost. It reminded me of like One Piece, where it's just like ragtag band of like they all have different sets of skills and they all do different things and they all have different personalities and just like the way they all come together and like the, the character dynamics are just like main character can stretch his arms really far <laughs> yeah, yeah for some reason I thought that was kind of a weird choice but you know it's, <laughs> it's Disney and they're just Disneyfying everything <laughs> no he can't do that um but they're already setting up like in the first two episodes I was like there's so much character development and so much potential and there's still like four seasons like to go so I'm really excited to uh, to continue watching that. Um, Did we talk about what you were playing? Going, I was, yeah, I was gonna yet. say. <laughs> I was gonna say like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we went a little <laughs> too fast. <laughs> it's because we were talking about Star I, Wars. I, I really didn't even do that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working on some projects, but uh, any projects you want to tease that are gonna be yes. on this channel? <laughs> so we, I've been working on. Pokemon tabletop campaign thing, and that's not going to be done for a while. But yeah. that's a big. That's because we. That's because we haven't even played our first session at, at, as of this point. Yeah. Um, but we did shoot the episode with our character creation and whatnot. Yeah. You know that'll that'll happen when it happens. Yeah, it's all gonna roll out. It's, like, <laughs> it's all gonna roll out slowly. <laughs> um, yeah, just in case you thought that Jesse uh, hated Pokemon. Wait till you see oh, gosh, MGM no, Pokemon I, tabletop. I game. love I love Pokemon with a passion, mm -hmm. but I feel like the games don't reflect that, mm -hmm. and that hurts me. <laughs> yeah. um, well, all I can say is we're gonna try to emulate the feel of the anime. For yes, me, rather than the games, so it'll be something a little bit different. Yeah, couldn't be more excited to try it. Out. Hopefully, not as poorly written. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm not a writer. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be less episodic. There's not gonna be like one character in every episode that will come across that's like, oh my god, I need some help. It sometimes will be like that. <laughs> okay. But only because that's. I just wanna see you go, Menopod, use Harden. No, Menopod, use Harden. <laughs> <laughs> just out harden each other until one of them just like. It <laughs> just condenses into gets a black so, hole. Yeah, it just gets so dense that they just like suck in the, all the world around it and then we end the show. <laughs> <laughs> How'd your universe end up, you know, Menopod? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The old Metapod gag. But that's using a weird fan-made system called PTU, Pokemon Tabletop United. I don't know if this system's going to work out yet. Yeah. It's really complicated. It is not easy. <laughs> the, the book is kind of a little messy. Dense. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Yeah. Anyway, um, for what I've been playing, I have this really strange addiction to a game called RimWorld. Oh, you're telling me about this. It is, it is the most sit back and do nothing game, and it is. I only play it because I'm tired half the time. Oh. So we're talking like it's like Space Sims if I remember it off the top of my head, right? I can't push any buttons. Yeah. So you you basically you're basically in charge of a few people building your village or I don't know anything you want it to be. You can harvest people as nourishment. Use oh. skin on their floor. Soil and crane is people. That yeah. took a turn. <laughs> you can make hats out of them. You can make human skin hats. It's so cute. It's cute. <laughs> this is not Happy Home Designer. It is not. <laughs> um, this game. This game is. I don't know how to describe it. It's like just some sort of addiction I have to this game. When you were and explaining it, is, it to me and you showed me some of the gameplay of it, I was like, I could absolutely be into this game if it was a little less clunky. The learning curve is. Freaking astronomical. That's what you were saying. You have to manage everything. Yeah. Uh, it is just... It's a little too much, but for some reason the tutorial just works. Mm -hmm. So that is how I got into it. And it is super mod friendly, so I probably spent like three hours last night just modding the game like I did <laughs> with Oblivion. Nice, yeah. Oh um, man, Oblivion, I stayed up all night modding and then it crashed every single time. See? That's the thing. I've never had RimWorld crash on me. Wow. Which is insane. Oh, wait because it wasn't devs and right? RimWorld modders. Because it wasn't made by Bethesda. Right. Well, congratulations, guys. You made the most stable game on my PC. Nice. Um, but, I don't know, man. Just, I don't know how to describe it. It's <laughs> like a village building simulator where you can do just anything yeah. with whatever you have. That's awesome. 
Um, other than that, I've been watching an anime, which is weird wow. out, out of character for me. Yeah. Uh, high school, high score girl. No. <laughs> Do you know about that? No. It's like a fighting game, like anime. Very cutesy really? anime where a guy and a girl meet in an arcade because they're playing I, Street Fighter. I've seen I've seen screenshots on Netflix, and I don't like the art style. That's why I haven't. Clicked it's that on weird it. CG yeah. anime. It's kind yeah. of a, a turn off, but I've been recommended it multiple times, yeah, probably because I love fighting games. But yeah, but uh, it is a volleyball anime. I do. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. That is so not your style. It is I'm really not, surprised. But it's only because my housemate has been watching it. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> that doesn't seem like her style either. She, I only met her once. But. Yeah, well, she, I think, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't actually know. No, she watches Steven Universe, so maybe. That's it true. Is. Yeah. Um, but That's she turned it on one day and she was hooked. And she, we've just been watching it after cooking dinner every night. We just like sat down for an hour and like, all right, put on haiku. That's like your ritual. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We'll just cook and watch TV. But I like that. This anime is just so anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but not in the bad way. No, it's, it's like, like that. when slice of life embrace the like anime ness yeah, of them. It's, it's not, amazing. It is not a slice of life at all. It's just it <laughs> is. Simply just people playing straight up sports. Okay, anime. so that sounds similar to always gets into it's the like Kuroko or Have you seen ping pong animation? No. Yeah, I can imagine. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the... yeah, exactly. It is literally them training and playing. Yeah, <laughs> that is yeah. all you'll ever see of this anime. Yeah, that's amazing. And I don't know, man. It's inspirational. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely like sports. Like I weirdly got into like Kuroko's basket. For a while, like I got halfway through the first season, and I was just like, "Yeah, yeah, go, you guys! Like, you're gonna pull the team together." And it's just like, and I, one thing I liked about that was that the, the main character was like, he was so <laughs> bland and forgettable, like in universe, uh -huh. that that's how he was good at basketball. Because all of a sudden, like they'd be like, the other team would be looking like down down the the court, they wouldn't see him, and they like, <laughs> well, no, he he'd be like down there, just kind of like doing whatever. And the next thing you would know, he would be like scoring a shot, and it's like, what? So, like, his whole thing was that, like, he's so forgettable that he's, like, basically stealthy on the basketball court. And his whole thing was, like, he would just get the good players the ball. Like, that was the <laughs> whole show. That's, man, that's pretty similar. Oh, really? Because the main character is, like, super short. So he's known as... Of course. He, he starts, like, building uh, good teamwork with, like, this one other guy who can, like, toss in the ball. And, and he's he really tall. It. Yeah. Okay. And everyone thinks that they're... No, no, he's not tall. He's just a really... He's, like, super in sync with him. He'll just okay. pass the ball to him no matter where he is. Yeah. So it's, like, some sort of superpower. All I know is that it's kind of, like, free and that every girl that I know that's into it thinks that they're all... Together. All together? <laughs> yeah, it's just one giant yeah, orgy. Well, they're all gay, there right? is, There's vibes there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure there are. <laughs> um, but I, I should mention... I've only watched this, like, sporadically. I've mm. only caught, like, an episode of season one and then, like, three episodes of season two. And I'm like, oh, I get where all this went. Yeah. And it's still good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah. How about you? Oh, so, yeah, I've been watching Kim Possible on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Just to relive childhood, mostly. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, I don't know. It's, uh... It definitely made me realize how much of a golden age we're into cartoons right now. Yeah. Because cartoons are not afraid to have continuous storylines. Where back then, like, almost nothing in Kim Possible, like, from episode to episode continues. It's all just like... Villain of the yeah, Day. Yeah, like, Villain of the Day, Monster of the Week kind of style. Like, there's no overarching plot. They're just, here are the characters, and here's them doing the same thing over and over. I hate that. Where, like, now they're like, oh, no, like, kids and adults both enjoy this style of animation. Yeah. And kids can comprehend it when it is a story. I know, you I don't have to dumb it down, like, for kids, you can make it a, a good show that doesn't... That appeals to both audiences. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, universe. I think that's also, like, a side effect of streaming be, being more of the thing that's mm -hmm. happening now, because cable is dying. Right. You're not gonna see an episode once a week yeah. anymore. Or you run the risk of, like, I forgot what happened in a week. Right. Or, like, oh, I, I, I caught, like... Even, I guess Pokemon was sort of like this, like, you caught, like, a random episode, and then all of a sudden... You watch it a week later, and Ash has seven badges, and you're like, what's going on? Right. Why did he get rid of Butterfree? Why don't we have Butterfree anymore? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what's happening? Yeah. Um, and I guess they're just not afraid of that, because with streaming, you just do 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 and you know exactly where you left off. Yeah. Like, huh. Well, Disney Plus is getting back to that now, though, because mm -hmm. it's like, once a week, hey, Mandalorian's going to come out. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, but the thing. But then you can still stream it in order. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which do you know what the like the second to last? Maybe we can get into this when we get into the episode. But the second to last uh, Mandalorian is comes out like the day before episode nine. Really? So that makes me think that the last episode is going to have something to do to tie it in. That'd be cool. Because why would they... Like, yeah, like a reference, that? at least? Yeah. Yeah, or at least just, like, they wanted to, like, get people really hyped about episode nine. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, maybe, yeah. Just leads, like, straight up into it. Because they're all coming... Aside from the first episode, which was on a Tuesday, they're all coming out on Fridays, except for the second to last one, which is going to be on the Wednesday before. So it's... I don't know. Maybe there's going to be some secret thing that's going to... There'll be, like, a spoiler at episode nine that you'll need to know before. Before you watch yeah. Mandalorian. Hmm. But, um, so, Kim Possible, have you been watching anything else? Um, I also watched the live action Kim Possible movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kim Possible and uh, more Kim worse Kim Possible. Yeah, which was. I didn't even know that was out. I knew they were making it. But... Oh, it was. It's one of those movies that's so cringy that you just, like, start laughing at how bad it is. Yeah. And, like, I understand it's made for kids and, like, there are Disney, like, original TV movies that, like, like, Xenon and, like, all those. I go back and, like, wow, this is super cringy and terrible, but I enjoyed it as a kid. (laughs) And I feel like that's just kind of where that lives. Like, I don't like it now, but I could see why kids would like it in the future. And, like, it has really weird, random, famous people in it. Um, I can't remember her name. Allison, uh, she's from Buffy. Did you watch Buffy? I have no idea. Uh, Well, if you you like Buffy, (laughs) she's the lesbian in Buffy. Uh, And she's Lily in How I Met Your Mother. Uh, Um, But she's just randomly Kim's mom. I don't know. It's just really weird. (laughs) Um, I I just thought it was poorly casted, terrible, terrible script, but hysterical and like, I don't know, it was fun to watch. (laughs) The only only thing I have done for like anything newsworthy is uh, freaking Half-Life VR was announced. Yeah, have you seen Half-Life that? Alex? Yeah, yeah, Half-Life Alex is called. Um, I want, I want to get into to VR so bad as it is. I need a good computer so I can start streaming. But now it's like, well, oh, I gotta. Go I just need them to. Now. Yeah, now that they actually smoothed it out to the point where like I don't die from having it. So I tried VR once. Well, when I was like, I guess when the first Oculus came out, mm. I forget what I played. Uh... It was like some super archery high. game. No, it was some, some old, old, old game. Mm. Not even like good graphics or anything. And I got super dizzy. Yeah. Could not play it for longer than like five minutes. Yeah. Because I get motion sickness. And then I played um, at PAX South two years ago. I played, what's the, is it, uh, it's like a space fighter game for VR. The, um, where you're like a space pirate? You yeah. Had, like the shield one and the gun? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I think it's just called like space pirate. Yeah, I think it's just called space pirate. Yeah. yeah, I played that. And I was like, whoa, they like fixed like the motion sickness. Like yeah. when you actually move your head, it feels like you're moving your head. Yeah. Which is, I think the biggest thing for me, I, that turned me off to VR completely. And now I'm like, oh, maybe I can try VR out again because it doesn't suck anymore. Yeah. I was the same way when I first played it. It was the first VR I ever played was, getting back to Star Wars, was the uh, PSVR. Um, there's like a an X-Wing. It was just like one mission where you'd, you'd like a rogue one. Get in the, rogue, yeah, pretty Star much. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. You get in and, you know, the cockpit comes down and you take off and you're just shooting stuff and, I got so sick that, like, the next day I was still nauseous from it. And I was like, well, VR is not for me. And then in town, that VR arcade just opened mm-hmm. up, and, and Drianna and I went. And um, I got a little bit sick, like, after the first day, but it was a lot better. Because they use um, HTC Vibes there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, the Pro model or whatever. And they're wireless, so you can kind of, like, walk around a little bit. And you're getting dizzy. Yeah, I was getting, bleh, it's like, sick, sick, sick. Like, where I couldn't even, like, and I work on a computer all day, so it's like, I couldn't like look at bright lights or like my computer. I would just get like so sick. But um, as long as I don't play it for too long, which according to how awesome they're gonna make <laughs> Half Life Alex, <laughs> it's gonna be dangerous. They're saying like fully destructible environments and like Source Engine like to like an extreme like glass shatters in a specific way. Like, I'm honestly just more surprised that there's another Half Life Half Life game coming. Yeah, I think what they'll do is just continue to re-release or not re-release, but release games that are just Half-Life something, Half-Life something, and never, never do Half-Life never do 3. Three. Mm. Like, or they can like, do Half-Life Alex and then release Half-Life 4. I feel like it's just because... <laughs> like, we never made 3! It's because Valve knows that, like, man, there's so much build-up on Half-Life 3. They can never live up to the hype. No, no it matter. It could be a perfect game. They it only won't matter. They're not going to only live up to the hype of, like, can I insert myself, sort of online style, into, <laughs> into Half-Life? Because otherwise it's not going to be good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Which seems like what you can do with VR. Yeah. Um... Yeah, they've got a lot to live up to. 
we'll definitely, I guess, like, see how uh, they implement all of, like, the gravity guns. That should be super fun to play with in yeah. VR. I think it's going to be, like, uh, I think they're called gravity gloves. Gravity so gloves. So it's, like, little, so I, th I guess that's how they get into the, like, um, each hand is a thing. So you can be, like, Nice. So, but, like, all the weapons and stuff, like, from the other games are still there. Um, I can hit people with a crowbar and actually crowbar, Feel it. of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whop. Um, yeah, but yeah. obviously not, they haven't released a whole lot about it, so we'll just have to see. Um, I don't know if there was a release date, do you remember? Um, okay. Um, we'll see. <laughs> um, the only other newsworthy thing I can think of is, uh, Shenmue 3. Which, I guess you said that release today? Yeah, it's out today. Should I be on this show? I seem to have no idea what's going on with video <laughs> games. Uh, yeah, actually, we started... Uh, this episode, we we brought you here today to uh, actually let you go. The show is just, <laughs> I'm actually your permanent I replacement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You're gonna have yeah. to replace me in all those those wedding photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're actually fired from my life as well. So if you could, uh, <laughs> Dread is actually fired too. We're just, oh, sh you know, she's not actually sick. <laughs> we let her go before before the show started. Um, no, that's completely understandable though, because like. It's Shenmue is not a huge franchise. Like to a lot of people, I know it means like a ton. I have like some mutual friends on my timelines and stuff that are just blowing the f up about it, and I'm like, I'm so happy for them because they never thought that this game would happen, yeah. especially after the second one. And like to be able to, it's like when uh, Serenity came out, and all the Firefly fans were like, "Holy crap, we actually get to see how the show ends," which is another. Fan base I was completely disconnected from. <laughs> yeah, we need to finish that. Uh, and then we can review it on the show. Because um, that'll be like my third time watching it. And like, your first. Have you ever watched Firefly? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Excellent. I knew you were a good replacement for a reason. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I would love to... I have some friends that I would love to have like to have on. Um, if, if you guys aren't familiar, we've only done one episode that's this. But um, we have a segment called um, Experience Share. Um, <laughs> Pokemon, uh, where basically we have somebody sit down that's like super freaking into a specific game. Um, like we want to have Jesse do a Katamari Damacy one. <laughs> um, I could do one about Oddworld. Juliana could talk about freaking The Sims, like busting out or whatever. Um, <laughs> and just like, as the name is, share your experience. So like, tell me why I should like this game, or even if like. You think that I wouldn't like it? Just tell me, like, why you like it. Like, what's like, what's your favorite game of all time? Oh, do you do you have that? Is that putting you on the spot? Oh lordy, I, I want to say Super Smash Brothers Melee. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm very into the Smash games, so if it was something that like I wasn't that into, I'd be like, all right, well, tell me about it, and like we just like deep dive into it. Well, and just like let always people... fun to hear people be passionate. Yeah, just gush yeah. their passions. That's the whole point of this that's, whole channel. The the reason we wanted to do this is because we have so many different. Interests, yeah. Like, you're super into Serenity. I'm, I was like, not, and then you did share it with me. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I am now. Yeah. And like, I'm into all sorts of weird games that you've never played. Like games where you can make people yeah. into hats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where you can people hat people. Hat people game. skin flesh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> skin flesh hat people. Uh, yeah, and I love that. Like the idea of just like here's something that I love and cherish so much, and here's why I love it, and then maybe like somebody would would pick up on it. Jesse and I could gush about Jet Set Radio, like, back and forth for, like, ah. ages, because, like, that's one of our favorite... Well, you you liked it when I played it in the office, so I know that... I know that. Yeah, good taste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that also helps that uh, all the Hideki Naganuma songs are on uh, Spotify. Oh, yeah. Um, we were trying to find Banjo-Kazooie stuff <laughs> today, and it just... Get your stuff together, Grant Curtin. Come on, Grant. And stop calling me. We'll get you on the show like when we feel like it. Jeez, we've got some higher profile people to get to. Just please me on the show. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I, I want to do like a whole just segment about game music. Yes. I would love to. Yeah. That, I, I mean, that's. I cool. actually want to. I, I just bought like a vinyl. Mm. That I want to just show off to people. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite artists. You know. Well, we've plans. been talking about doing. Uh, like little unboxing segments, like I just got the um, Psychonauts uh, collector's edition from Limited Run Games. Yeah, so I'd love to just, well, let bust. Me just get it. Oh no! Oh crap! It's, it's actually here. It's yeah, we can tease it. So 
good looking. I know, it's, it's the not door. It's still in the plastic. You open the door. I know, we're going to have to cut the plastic. <sighs> it's, it's, it's nice. You can buy really another nice. one so I'm that a... we don't have to open the plastic. <laughs> I know. Maybe um, you can focus. You're probably not in focus. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just> not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm a collector insofar as as long as I have the item, I'm fine. Like I'm, I'm fine with opening it. I want to actually use it. I spent the money on it. Right. Like, um, but actually, I do have two copies of the limited run. Um, the first limited run I got was the Odd World uh, New and Tasty, mm -hmm. which is the Abe's Odyssey remake. Um, and I'm actually not going to tell the story about why I have two, <laughs> have two of them, but. It involves an error on their part, so I don't want them to be like, Hey! Um, <laughs> send that back! But uh, I have one that I opened and played and loved, obviously, and then I ended up with a, a second one that they sent me by accident. <laughs> so I have one that's sealed. Um, I don't know if that'll ever be worth anything, but it's worth a lot to me! Mm. <laughs> um, uh, we talked a lot about things that we've been watching. Oh, this. We may have to put off until um, next week when Brianna's feeling better, but this week was the 30th anniversary of All Dogs Go to Heaven, uh, and we watched it last night, and man, it is messed up. I forgot how dark that show got, or that, how dark that movie got, and also how much, like, it, <laughs> my voice is choking up now because I'm just thinking about that ending. We both cried at the end of it, just saying, but... I just love that movie as a kid because I always had German Shepherds growing up, so I was just Aww. like, it's a German Shepherd. So they're Yay. all Charlie. All your dogs were Charlie. Uh huh. <laughs> Charlie. Oh, I've uh, never watched that movie. So really? Like, yeah. Ugh. Maybe we'll watch it again. We'll see. Um, other anniversaries this week are um, well, actually on the same day, which may be why it kind of got <laughs> buried and not a lot of people like had it, a strong memory of it, uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven, was because on the same day, 30 years ago, uh, Little Mermaid came out. Oh, oh yeah. So, <laughs> maybe not the, hey, there we go. Maybe not the best choice of uh, <laughs> release, but it still managed to like, somewhat be ingrained in a lot of people's minds that I know. Mm. Like a lot of people are like, yeah, I think I saw it. But when you list like Disney animated movies that are like, or like non-Disney animated movies, excuse mm -hmm. me, that are like good, most people put that somewhere up there normally. Yeah, I feel like it comes up in conversation like towards the end and people yeah. are like, oh yeah, yeah. it's never like the first I feel first like another one's always like Anastasia. Anastasia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's because people always think that that is a Disney Yeah, exactly. Movie. Um, but yeah, watching it made me want to watch like all of these like old dark cartoons like Brave Little Toaster and like Little Nemo and stuff. Um, we're back. Do you remember movie We're Back? I... Freaking dinosaurs. Love. Yeah. Dinosaur movie. It's I so terribly that bad that it's amazing. No, I think that's a genuine. I mean, I haven't watched it in probably 30 years. But oh, so I recently <laughs> watched it, like really? in the past like six months. Oh. I don't know why. I was bored one night and I was just like, I'm gonna watch a movie from my childhood. I remember my grandparents had it on VHS for me. Yep. So I like. The big white yeah. clam shell case. So I dug it up out of the internet and I <laughs> put it on and was just like, whoa, this yeah. movie was done by people who were on drugs. Major Lots drugs. Lots of drugs. Well, it's like all dogs go to heaven. Like, okay, there's a dog heaven. I guess naturally to somebody in their mind, they were like, well, I guess we have to show the dog hell. And there's like this very, very dark scene where there's just like demon dogs and just like dinosaur skeletons coming up out of the, the lava. It is terrifying. But yeah, all those... Are the demon dogs all Dobermans? Um, the main one is, I think, supposed to be like a dog. Ah. Yeah. yeah, or like maybe a raw Dog one. racism. <laughs> <laughs> Spe speciesism? Speciesism. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, we can, we can talk about 90s animated stuff. That could be a whole other show. But, yeah, like, seriously. Good. Actually, one of the things I want to do is, like, start putting together lists of, like, our top 10, like, specific things and, like, compare what we, what we put. Mm -hmm. So we could do, like, top 10, um, like, 90s cartoon openings or like, where everyone's number one better be X-Men. <laughs> or Gargoyles, which... I forgot how good that was watching it again on Disney Plus. Um, movie or uh, game anniversaries uh, is the 15th year anniversary this year of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. What the you? only Metal Gear I never played. <laughs> really? I played <laughs> one, so two, wow. and four. That is the only Metal Gear I have played. <laughs> <laughs> together, we have played yes. the entire together series. Together, we have played all of them. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's going to be so fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have played 
Mm, maybe a quarter of Metal Gear Solid 3. I... I was getting very into it when I was playing it on the HD remake on PS3, and my system got stolen. Ah, okay, I can, I, think I, just, I can understand that, I can understand that. I had to start that I think, over. Like, so what I did, is I just read the synopsis online, which I know is sinful. Yeah, but I'm getting to that point, though, where yeah, it's just like, a lot of the charm, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Back when, like, that was fairly new, or I think maybe 4 was just coming out, I was like, I'm gonna go through every Metal Gear game. And that included like the MSX ones, like the, mm. the, the pixelated ones, because that was before I went to college and I had all the time in the world. Uh, and I did not regret it. It was really cool going back and like seeing where like the roots of the series came from and like mm. you running around like in the cardboard box and like a stealth game, like, you know, back in that day where everything was Contra and everything was just explode everything as much as you can and you get to a very like slow burn story, the dialogue was good when it was translated properly and it wasn't <laughs> I feel asleep. <laughs> Which, I too feel asleep. <laughs> I feel asleep. Someone set us up the bomb. <laughs> um, but I never beat Metal Gear Solid 3, so... That means that I stopped, because I was playing them in sequential order, that means I stopped there. So I technically have not played any Metal Gear games beyond 3. Huh. Wow, so that's never a travesty, because 4 is amazing. Never played Revengeance, yeah, really Rising, good. Revengeance, whatever the Raiden one was end up called, uh, and never played 5, which is a sin, because that's one of my favorite franchises. And I can't believe I just admitted that on camera. <laughs> it's okay, it just means time to play them later. Yeah, that's true. Um, if we get our stream up and going, we can play it for everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just me. You can just play it for me, finally. Uh, Donkey Kong Country. 25 years old. Yeah. Have you played those? Of course. Have you played one of the best platformers ever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ugh, the music. Everything about the music in oh, that boy. game. Oh boy. Do you have something to say? <gasps> I have only ever played one Donkey Kong Country game, and it was like Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy. Oh no. Because I never had a SNES. So I never, never played it. See, but I didn't have an SNES, and I played it on Game Boy Advance? Does that accurate? I think must have, I think oh, it was a regular done, Game Boy. Like, must have actually... Done, like, re like ports. Yeah. yeah. It felt like I was playing the SNES version, so it was... I, I, I know I played 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I got the same experience. I was like, okay, I, I played this one. I can. I and feel I feel like I can play. All I time. have Tropical Freeze on my Christmas list because I just got a Switch. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your Switch. Do you want to show off your Switch Lite? I do. Yes. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Look how light it is. <laughs> you can't tell because you're not holding it. That's true. But it actually, it feels super nice. I'm very happy with this. Yeah. Um, I was kind of hesitant if I wanted to get the light over the like regular Switch because mm -hmm. you obviously lose the ability to dock it, but. I already know a ton of people who have Switches that are docked, like, and I only have ever used the TV for Smash, so yeah. this was basically going to be my Fire Emblem Pokemon machine, so I'm pretty <laughs> happy with it. Well, that's the, it's the Pokemon mm -hmm. uh, special yep, with edition. Yep, uh, with Simon's icon on the back. Yeah, which just from a distance, or maybe with my piss poor eyesight, just looks like you've just been scratching it along a table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's hard to see it without, like, shining it in the light. They're mm -hmm. very subtle etches, yeah. which I kind of like. Yeah, that was like the um, the 3DS, the, the, that might have actually been a... DS Lite, the, the black and white ones with like the very mm -hmm. subtle, um, Zekrom and Reshrom. Yeah, mm -hmm. Zekrom. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy with the color scheme. I think that's like my, one of the reasons I wanted to get this. I do like it. It's yeah, nice like and the, subtle. Yeah, like the magenta and the cyan. Oh, it's just so cool. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, is that there Donkey Kong Country? And yeah, Netflix? Donkey Kong Country and actually Donkey Kong 64. Oh. Um, uh, it's 20 uh, years. Oh, rare. Yeah, oh, yes. oh rare. Oh, rare. Rest oh, in peace. It's the biggest collective. But they're still around. <laughs> Are they, though? Well, that's, that's fair. The um, original rare is not around. Right. Now they just make it. It is now Google Microsoft rare. RAM. Rare. Yeah. Microsoft rare. Um, <laughs> speaking of Donkey Kong Country, the composer is going to be at MAGFest. Nice, which we are which going, we are to, going to, to. Come by our us. booth and say hi. Actually, we don't have a booth. <laughs> But if you see us there, it would mean the world if somebody recognized me. Yeah, on the internet. seriously. Could you imagine? <laughs> that would be like that would make my life. Absolutely. Uh, but anyway, uh, Donkey Kong sixty four. I don't like it. <laughs> don't I, like okay, it. so I, I played DK sixty four, and I think what happened was they're like, "Oh my god, 
Everyone loved Banjo Kazooie. It was so much fun. What if we make it so that they have to collect even more? That games? right. Ugh. Now the the game itself was fun, but it was like as a kid, I was like, I have, I'm bored. I have fond memories of it as a kid, yes. but I remember getting bored even back then. Yeah, yeah exactly. Same. That was one of the first games where I was like, oh, I, I guess there are games that just aren't fun. And mm -hmm. I, I like never had boredom when it came to Banjo Kazooie. So like, yeah. I just they just went Same. overboard. That's the thing. Yeah. So a little cross promotion here. Uh, I was actually just featured on an episode of a friend of mine's podcast called uh, Still Loading, and for his 100th episode, mm -hmm. we talked about Donkey Kong 64, so go check that out to listen to me talk about it some more. I was um, almost on that episode to tell him about how, how much, much he liked it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember he posted about it and was like, does anyone love Donkey Kong 64 a lot and want to talk about it on an episode? And you were like, I hate it a lot, can we talk about that? <laughs> uh, which, that kind of ended up being... Like, I didn't hate it, but I was definitely the voice of negativity on that episode. Mm. Because, like, I love Banjo. I'm looking at the, <laughs> the Banjo. Yeah, a Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Kazooie right that's there. still in my N64, that's still in my TV, that's hooked up right now. <laughs> like, I had such fond memories of that game. And it's definitely in my, like, top 10. Um, that when I went from that to Donkey Kong, it was like, you tried. You tried to just take everything and just do it more, and that just made it do less. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe they'll. I That's want sort of how it felt with ukulele too. Did any of you play either yeah. of you play ukulele? No. I, I played a demo of it. Oh, so I kickstarted it because I loved banjo so much yeah. that I was like, man, I just I, this team like the, I don't know, just a banjo successor sounds amazing, mm -hmm. and I was very disappointed. So <laughs> I think I, everyone was. I got I got the opposite end because I didn't kickstart that. I kickstarted Hat in Time, uh, which is another uh, another Sp like spiritual successor. It's kind of, no, not really, because it's more of, like, think Mario Odyssey and its movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Think of that in an indie platformer. <laughs> okay, okay. It so is... I'm imagining, like, Mario Odyssey with, um... Pixel art. No, no, with... <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> it's, but... No, it's not even pixel art. It's, like, very competent, like, mm. kind of cel-shaded, cartoony -ish. Okay. What's, what's the... I'm gonna kick my... My future self is screaming at my current self right now, but... The one where you, like, walk back and forth and it makes time go forward and... Braid. Like, Braid, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like um, Mario Odyssey Braid. I don't know where you're getting Braid. Because it's a hat in time, I was just imagining there's oh, time, time oh, mechanics. I'm, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> not really. No, but I don't actually know anything about the game, no, I just assume that there's time. I feel like it got overshadowed by Ukulele because Ukulele tried to get the mascot part right. Yeah, uh, well, and Ukulele was also... I mean, like, the, the developers from Rare that were on it, so, like, we were like, yeah. they're not oh, going to yeah. fail. Grant Kirkhope's making the music again, yeah. like, oh, which, which was the music's so great. Music's amazing. Yeah. There was a lot of promise in that, and I think that's why now, I'm so... The thing good. is, jumping back to Donkey Kong Country, I've heard great things about the ukulele-like Donkey Kong Country ripoff game for the Switch. I, I don't know the exact title of it. Oh, I think it's, like, ukulele something and layer. And the Unforgotten Lair or something Yeah, like I think that, that's yeah. it, yeah. Oh, so, and it's literally, yeah. instead of being a collectathon, it's a Donkey Kong Country style yeah. game. So instead of trying to be a banjo or a DK64, it's just a so it's DKC. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. But, but like, it looks cool. I and like everyone said it has like the charm of ukulele, like the characters, which is what everyone wanted, but like with actual good gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, hat in time, can't recommend it enough. Hmm. Buy that instead of ukulele. <laughs> uh, oh. Because just good. It's really good. Yuka oh. Lele gets a 0 out of 10 for me because oh. I kickstarted it and I was just so upset Ooh. about how bad it was. That sucks. <sighs> I got two copies of Hat in Time because I kickstarted it enough. Can nice. I have one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I probably don't have a good enough computer to play it on. Like I'm on a freaking <laughs> chisel and... Uh, um, speaking of kickstarted games that people were disappointed about because it disappeared, uh, Psychonauts 2. My, everyone was like, for a while they like, they met their Kickstarter goal, and then, like, Double Fine just, like, shut up about Psychonauts for, like, the longest time, and everyone was like, uh, oh, yeah, where's, where's, where's my money? And until, like, it, was it this year? It's this, this E3, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was, <laughs> was, like, four or five years or yeah. something. No, I like when companies do that, but for a Kickstarter, that's kind of different. Yeah. Uh, you're, people are putting their money forward before yeah, you show to, anything. You're supposed to give them updates with your yeah. investors. Yeah. Could you imagine, like, having that much clout that you're just, like, somebody wants something so bad that you're like, give me all of your money and we will make it. Not like, we started this, here's There's some of it. Some of you might die before this game comes out, <laughs> but, like, it's fine. 
I was surprised when they showed it at all. I was like, oh, yeah. wow, I really thought they were just going to like ghost this game which would be vaporware forever. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just literally just like Tim Schafer just like on an island somewhere like, <laughs> and then it's just never to be seen again. Just to, I see that animation in the style of Psychonauts in my head. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's got like a big weird oblong head. Mm -hmm. Raz jumps out of it with like a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt and a drink like, yeah, we really got those idiots, huh? I, I can't wait to see that art style just fully realized in mm -hmm. beautiful HD graphics. Yep. Yeah, Agreed. I'm super excited. Uh, we'll have to play uh, the first one. We'll do a little unboxing of the first one and then maybe play the, the first level. Oh yeah. Just to see if like that install is still there, which I know it is because I can... I played it recently, so... Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited for the second one. Um, uh, last anniversary this week is the 15th anniversary of World of Warcraft, which your boy here cannot stand that game. <laughs> I tried it several times. I have a lot of friends that are into it, and I'm like, just try it, just try it out. And I did. I did so MMOs. many times. So I, I was an MMO junkie. Mine. I played Guild Wars first, mm. played Guild Wars for four years, and then I eventually moved to the actual MMO, which is World of Warcraft. But actually, looking back on it, Guild Wars had a lot of charm, and I really liked it. But World of Warcraft, I, the thing about it is what made that game amazing and why it was so successful is like, yeah, there's a story and characters, but it was more about the fact that you could build community in like a day before community building through like Discord or Reddit was like a thing. Yeah. So like, I have friends from World of Warcraft and like my guild when I was in high school that I still talk to to this day. Wow. Because there are people that like I would get on and I would play with them for like three or four hours every single day. And like, and it wasn't just like, oh, I'm playing Call of Duty and you play like with a party of three. Mm -hmm. Like these are like, it was like 40 plus people because you had Jeez. to coordinate raids that are the size of like, you know, 20... 25 people yeah and like i don't know it just i think the community aspect is why it was so successful in the past and if anyone who plays it now knows they've like kind of leaned toward the casual aspect as most companies are because they want everything to be crazy accessible and that's why i don't play anymore because they <laughs> basically made it so you don't have to communicate with anyone you don't have to have guilds mm -hmm. you can just click looking for a group and it'll just pair you with random people just mm -hmm. like you were matchmaking in call of duty yeah that doesn't feel like an mmo like exactly that's totally not my style but like I'm upset that they took that out. Yeah, so for for me, it just has fond memories of, like, nights with my guildies, like... Yeah, and that, like, my guildies. Yeah, the guildies. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it was fun. Yeah. I'm just inherently a shy person, so I can't go on MMOs and just talk to random strangers, be like, hey, can you guys, like, back me up or something? <laughs> can you give me the chain mail, please? I'm yeah. a healer. Yeah. And that's I the weird part. Is like, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, also, I played support and heals. Mm -hmm. I was a holy pally. Um, but, like, yeah, the, uh, the getting able to, like, talk to people when I was, like, 15 was super weird. Mm -hmm. I was, like... I don't want to download Team Speaker Vent and actually talk yeah. to you. Yeah, I'm just oh, gonna Vent. Type. Wow. Yeah. Holy crap! I forgot about Vent. Mm -hmm. That takes me back to like Counter Strike and mm -hmm. all the PC games. That Counter Strike was probably the one I played, like got the most into. I wish I had gotten it. Like, I wish MMOs were my thing because I'd love to play like Final Fantasy XIV or like mm -hmm. Star Wars, like Old Republic. Like played that. I, I love <laughs> or Galaxies. Did you remember Galaxy? Star Wars Galaxies? I never got to play it. I heard it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, it's just not my thing. Even that's why I'm afraid. Like as much as we talk all the time about like, oh, there should be a Pokemon MMO. It'll be so good. Like I'm afraid that I wouldn't like it. I can get that. I understand that fear. But also MMOs are, like I said, moving away towards being what MMOs back in the day. They're not the EverQuest model is dead. Yeah. And I just I think it's just gonna stay dead. Yeah. Yeah. I I just hate when it's like, like I got super excited for um. Have you seen anything for Black Desert? Mm mm. It's like a super super pretty like Korean MMO that like has been out for like five years on PC, but just came out on um, PS4. And it's like, the character creation is like amazing. You can just make all these like super hot anime characters. And it's just like <laughs> gorgeous graphic effects and like the, the magics and particle effects are like amazing. And all the trailers look dope. And then I played the beta for it and it was just like, my screen was just like, somebody vomited all of the, oh, like, the UI was off it. And it was yeah. just like so cluttered. And it was like, I don't remember what all these freaking buttons do. And like the frame rate was trash. And it was just like, yeah. I played it for like That's one of the reasons. So I've only played Final Fantasy XIV a little bit and mm -hmm. like A Realm of Born, not the original. And I, it, it has that traditional Final Fantasy UI charm, which is nice. Okay. Because so many MMOs get bogged down by that, oh. where it's like, oh, here's it's like, the UI and anything. your character is it's big. But yeah. here's all the buttons you have to press. Yeah, all the stuff you gotta remember and like you're watching all these cooldown things. I don't know. It's just like, that's why like MMOs and dungeon crawlers like Diablo, like that new Diablo trailer that came out, I watched it and I was like, Holy crap, this is amazing! And then I remember that the gameplay for Diablo is like, 
everything of that just is not me. Like, yeah. I don't want to talk trash on it because I know people love that gaming style, mm -hmm. but like, it was just so not for me. And well, it's I was like, just like make a movie, well, just make what, a Diablo what, movie. Well, a lot of games are doing, even like Pokemon's doing, like the wild areas. They're touching and they're taking aspects of MMOs and like World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. and they're applying it, which is how we got games like Destiny and like. Yeah, that was a nice. Like yeah. fusion of the... and I really like the idea of like games where there's like permanent like permanence to your character, permanence to the things you do, and like social spaces. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm all about that community, man. Yeah. Like, any way I can like actually like socialize mm -hmm. with other humans because I, I hate the like oh randomness. This random person I'm never gonna see again. I know. Yeah. Mm. And they're usually just talking trash or like yelling at their dog in the background. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh gosh. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Um, back to Xbox Live days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Call of Duty lobby chats, my favorite. Oh man, our OG Xbox Live. We're like Halo Two. Mm -hmm. Actually, the first Xbox Live game I ever played was I think Unreal Tournament, and I was just my friend would play it, and I would just sit and like talk trash or just be like, oh, poop, <laughs> and say poop to strangers. I, it's like crank calling, but like they can't hang up on me. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I thought that was the, fun the funniest freaking thing. My dad. Used to play GTA Online a lot. Oh no. <laughs> he would get plenty of characters, just the only ones with the mic were always the most obnoxious. Yeah. But sometimes he would get like a gem. <laughs> there was somebody who would not mute because they were so like bizarre. Or funny. Or just they said some weird phrases you... that didn't make any sense, like pull your socks up. <laughs> pull your socks up. <laughs> pull your That's socks amazing. Up. Pull your socks up. It's <laughs> like what? What is this bizarre it's like side. it's like watching a like fighting game commentary where they're just saying like all right what's for breakfast all right yeah. happy feet <laughs> <That is Belco. laughs> what, are, what are these terms actually I, I did recently find out that what's for breakfast means like what are you going to do on a wake up like a wake up attack oh yeah. that's so yeah. clever i know it's like oh i love that like ah that's why i like i love i have so much respect for like good casters yes. on fighting game tournaments yeah any phrase Good that, ass Tekken. Yes. <laughs> like, if they can just throw out a, a phrase and it sticks, yep. you are legends. Also, yes. if, you're, if, you're even if you're even slightly entertaining, thank the Lord. Oh, yeah. yeah. There are so many bad casters who oh. talk like this. Like, Man, oh. it's so exciting. They're going to hit each other. He's wow. punching them, and he's really got to try to not be punched. Is that a chain uh, grab? Because once, a chain grab. once his uh, health bar gets all the way down, then it's going to be over for him. I'm going to talk over you for a little bit. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to start talking about my personal life. Oh, okay. I watch well, this anime. Look at their super bar. <laughs> look at their super bars. You can that do some cool stuff. But I want to talk more about the anime I've been okay. watching. Well, what do you watch? <laughs> so let's go like you. And, uh, <laughs> Um, but what I was going to bring up earlier, have any of you guys ever been in a lobby where, like, someone started singing, but it's, like, weirdly uh, good, and you're like, I don't know what to do about this? It's I like, don't want to hear this right now, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to not hear yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to miss out on this. It might be the next big star, but also, like, I really got to focus on what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I would do that sometimes. It would never be good, but I would do it. <laughs> uh. Uh, so, oh, by the way, hi, Dad. Hey, Dad. <laughs> I'm also your son. You wanted to say something about Oh, so did you guys know that there is an entire community of people who roleplay on GTA Online? Oh, wow. I can yeah. imagine. I, I've watched quite a few videos. I didn't really know. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like a thing like you can go on Twitch right now and like go to GTA Online and find streams of people who are like, it's not even like, it's like these servers are hardcore. Literally, like, if you go out of character, they will ban you from the server. Yeah, some of them are weird and... Whoa! It, Bizarre, kind they're of boring. They're super weird and bizarre. Like, it's people role-playing, like, it's almost Second Life-y, where they're, like, role-playing, like, just, like, a regular person, and, like, they have to follow, like, the law. If they yeah. can't shoot people, they have to, like, drive, right? You stop it's, at red lights. Yeah, and... it's the weirdest thing. Yeah. It's just, like, there's literally a thing out there for everybody. I totally get that, though. Like, that, like, GTA is a big enough and expansive enough and diverse enough game that, like, you can essentially do that. But where I get a little weirded out is when I'm playing, like, looking for matches on Halo, and I come across role-playing lobbies. Wait, and that's Halo. a thing? What? That is a thing. Oops. You can go... <laughs> you can, I've only ever seen it in Halo 5, I guess because it has the most robust, like, forge, so, like, they'll build, like, little, like... Role-playing community? Towns and, like, stuff where people will be, like... A lot of it will be, like, very heavy, like, 
within the lore, like military stuff, where they were, like I went into a room one time and they were all the characters, all the Spartans were just like lined up, and there was like a guy like pacing around, like, "All right, Spartans, we gotta do this operation, and I don't want any failure." And they're all like, "Sir, yes, sir," and they're like, "Protocol and everything," and they're like, "All right, I want you to get in this warthog, and you're gonna drive around," and like they were going through like actual like I, I wonder military if it's, drills. I wonder if it's actual like soldiers who were like. This is a PTSD thing, or like a way to like, I don't know. But then sometimes it'll just be like little kids that are like trying to be cool, and then you know, I'll just chuck a grenade into the middle of them, and they're like, oh, God, oh, sir, we're gonna have to ban this guy. <laughs> it's like they still will like remain in in uh, in character. It is it is bizarre. There's like sex clubs. There's like like people will build like strip clubs Guys. in Halo, and there'll be like female Spartans. To, like you know, you can't. There's no emoting. There's no dancing or sexy stuff. Like, like, so there's just, just be like. Teabagging this pole, and it's just like all these guys around, like, oh yeah, man, she's so or like so moving hot. the sword back and forth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> well, that's getting censored. And it's bizarre, <laughs> and it's showing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it is weird. Or they'll build like kind of like with the smash thing, where they're like the stage builder, like they'll build like very risque stuff with, oh, the, yeah. with the forge, and it's like. Oof, oh, okay, <laughs> and then usually like. You'll see the list of servers, and it'll be like hot sex club, and then you'll like refresh it, and it'll be gone because like I'm sure they're not allowed to like do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll just, it. just go on Second Life. <laughs> Is that still active? I maybe. it has to be. Yeah, I can't imagine that it's been gone. That's like a very weird dystopian. I have this mental model of Second Life. I've never played it, but like I just imagine that there's people just like hooked in that it's like they're literally like their whole real lives are just like inside of second life like depressing and like yeah. they have to get on second life to live and that's I, like, I, this is, eh, that could happen but yeah. uh that, did you ever watch that weird g4 show mm -hmm. that was like based in second mm -hmm. life what i've yeah. only ever seen things like that where people make fun of things that are happening oh, in second oh, life right. or like make fun of people who are playing second life i've never actually seen someone take the game seriously but there was like an actual <laughs> narrative that somebody made a tv show on g4 Oh, I wonder why G4's gone. gone. <laughs> like, within the actual game of Second Life? What the heck? I was so... But I don't know how that worked, man. I don't yeah. know who pitched that and how it got approved, but... Well, yeah, they had to have been, like, at least sponsored or, like... It was some... I think it was, like, a short segment in a different show or something. Okay. Yeah. There's an adding Adam, Adam Sessler in the corner That's going, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Drianna, anytime she... Wants to refer to Adam Sandler, she always calls him Adam Sessler for some reason. <laughs> That's hysterical. I'm like, why is he the name that comes to your brain? He's so first less famous than Adam Sandler. Like, the one guy that was like on that one show on G4 instead of like, you know, up there with like Jim Carrey in terms does of he, like. Yeah, does she say because I like Adham Sessler more? <laughs> yeah, that's <Ooh>. true. <laughs> I know a certain guy who's gonna be real upset to hear that. <laughs> Every it's, episode it's, I do it's like a play with Adam Adam Sandler and <laughs> Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do is play some video games here. Oh my God, that's not even bad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> first try. I just watched a um, a video where it was called like Actors on Actors or something, and it was like I think Variety did it. And it's just like, just under an hour, and it's just Adam Sandler and Brad Pitt, and they're just talking about acting and movies of each other's that they've liked. And it's just, it's such a weird dynamic, because it's just like, you know, Brad Pitt, like, he's like, I just made Ad Astra, and uh, Adam Sandler's like, I made jokes about poop. <laughs> it's, just, it's just such a weird, weird dynamic, because it's, it's funny seeing like, Adam Sandler getting real deep and like, talking about Serious thing. process, yeah. and then Brad Pitt just being like, "Oh, that one scene was just hilarious with that," you know. And they're just the back and forth was like really cool, and I was like, I was so enthralled with it. I was like, I want more of this. I want more of just like very bizarre like pairs of actors talking with each other, or, or another um, outlet. I don't know. It might be Variety still. Just like actor roundtables where mm -hmm. they'll literally get oh, like yeah. the top of the top, like Jim Carrey and like. John Boyega was on one, um, Sam Rockwell, like, and they're like, all just like, how many Oscars are at this, this table right now? And they just get, just deep dive into their, like, processes and stuff, and it's just, it's, it's super cool. So, once you finish up with this episode, listening to these jagoffs talk, <laughs> go watch that, it's pretty Go watch cool. people with actual talent. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we... We watched uh, we watched the episode of uh, Mandalorian episode two. Mm. wasn't a whole lot to talk about. Um, also, Driana is not with us, so we might save that for for next week. We can talk about uh, episode two and three. 
Also, um, they already got rid of the best characters. Yeah, I can't believe they killed Darth Vader in the second episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, what do you mean? The old oh, IG-88. No, the old guy. Oh. He just left. Well, like, spoiler! Well, I oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or, I keep saying IG-88, but it's, it's IG-11. But I'm sure going to talk that about IG-11. Yeah. Is, it, is that what it is? I don't know. I just, no. just thought that sounds nicer. Just adding panache to it. <laughs> yeah. Um... But we can, we've kind of been going for a while, so we can, we can kind of wrap up. The, yeah. the only interesting thing that I, I think would be cool to see the, the fruits of uh, on, on, I almost said on stream, like we're actually doing this live, uh, on camera or on our show is I signed up for the, um, the Imager Secret Santa. Mm. Um, and I know Reddit does one too, so like maybe I'll do that one as well. But um, we should definitely all like sign up for that, see like what we get, say, like, you know, we talk about like what we're going to send, like the profiles that we get, mm -hmm. and like, oh, we're sending this, and then we can have like a little, like, after Christmas, like when the stuff actually arrives, we can have like a little unboxing. Oh, uh, you could also send them a little card that says like, if you enjoy your gift, so watch, yeah, the, watch, our, watch the experience point, here's the QR code, scan yeah, it. because I'll be opening your <laughs> gift on camera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that could be really cool. Yeah, so, and if you want to get in on that, do it. <laughs> and they do a lot of like, Cool things where it's like, if you don't want to like receive a gift, you can just sign up to only give, or you can give bonus gifts to people, like if they get mismatched or somebody doesn't actually do a gift, or you can straight up just be like, there's charitable things where you can just like, I want to just want to send like, like is there, is there a selfish option? I just want to receive. Yeah, I only want to just <laughs> sign up with like 80 email accounts, like I want to receive, I want to receive. <laughs> what if, if these will be Bill Gates? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could you imagine? You're like, oh, I'm going to send you this Hot Wheels car that I found that was kind of cool, and you just get, like, a X giant satchel of gold coins. Scorpio or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess, I guess we can just wrap it up there for this week. Um, uh, thanks to Aaron for being on again. Hopefully, if you've got the time, you can be a regular member of the Experience Point team. Um, thank you, Jesse, for talking smack on everything that we love. <laughs> just kidding. I just like that. That's like that your. That seem to happen. Yeah, that's like your. Uh, like this. <laughs> your little <laughs> cynical, <laughs> cynical side over there. Um, and uh, and and well wishes to to Driana. I appreciate it because she's recovering and currently is, like still bleeding out of her mouth from surgery. So mm. go to sleep with that image in your head. <laughs> it's only a tooth. She only got a tooth pulled. That's, yeah, it was, yeah. It wasn't it was, we actually said what it was. Yeah, she had a <laughs> she had a tooth pulled. Um, but uh, that's Triana in there. I'm Andrew. Hi, I'm Jesse. <laughs> I'm Aaron. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Donate to our Patreon. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and donate to our Patreon. Uh, and if you don't want to donate to the Patreon, sharing and just talking about it uh, is free. So we would appreciate that very much. Help feed our Bulbasaur. <laughs> yeah, our Bulbasaur is dead. We can't even afford a plant to fit in the Bulbasaur. <laughs> there we go. It's uh, an <laughs> autumn Bulbasaur. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Pause. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> but. But. Jump right back into the. But. In. But. 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 Five. It's weird if someone didn't have a butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's insensitive. <laughs>